Hey everybody, I'm making a video to show you my new boat. When I was looking to buy and looking to put together what I consider the perfect fishing boat, I was really surprised how little information there is online about some of these boats. And I had done a lot of research and I just couldn't find any walkthrough videos of fully equipped boats. Now at times you'll see some of the manufacturers or usually the dealers will put walkthrough videos together and show off some of their features, but rarely do you see them fully rigged. And so I had been looking into boats for several years. I've been planning, I've been saving, I've been doing everything I could and I was just so surprised how little information there is out there online about some of this. I'm going to tell you right up front, this video may not be the most professional. I have never recorded a video like this. I have never done any editing. In fact, I'm going to edit this video off nothing more than a free download I got online called iMovie. And so I've never done that before. So there's going to be a learning curve there. I am filming it myself, so at times when I'm showing you some of these features, it might be a little shaky, because, but I'm going to do my best, and uh, I'm not going to go real in-depth with every single feature on it. Obviously, we don't have time for that. What I'm going to do is try to highlight a couple of my favorite features on there. Um, the real reason I'm doing this is just, if any of you are in a similar position that I was, I hope this video helps you in some way, shape, or form. This is the Duckworth Offshore 26. It has a dry weight of 5,326 pounds before the motors and accessories. It has a two foot offshore bracket, making a combined length of 28 feet and two inches. This boat is equipped with twin Yamaha 200s, so we have exceptional power and also the reliability of twins. We also have a 9.9 high thrust kicker motor and we can use that for trolling slowly for salmon and any other application we need it. Down the sides we have black metallic paint. We went with three rub rails. The bottom rub rail is reversed all the way to the chine. You can see the boat has smoked glass windows which is really nice on the bright days on the water. This is the 96 inch cabin. 
So the aft steering station has throttle controls for the little motor, for the kicker. Inside we've got a full enclosed cabinet, just for a fire extinguisher, everything like that. This is also where we've installed the hydraulic pump for the autopilot. Right here, we've added a switch for the autopilot to be on standby. So if we're out fishing and we decide to engage the autopilot, one hit of this will keep the boat going a direct straight line. It's not designed to navigate around, but it will at least hold a straight line. The aft steering station is equipped with a ram mount right here for securing the iPad, which ties into the main fish finder up front. On the corner, you have LED lights on both sides of the boat, as well as a secondary VHF radio, also tied into the one on the interior. So up on the top, we've obviously got the rocket launchers, five on each side, as well as on the side, have a net gaff holder, as well as two additional rod holders equipped with an in-floor fish box it's fully insulated it's also equipped with a macerator pump so when you keep your fish in there and holding that macerator pump will pump out all that melted ice or water or anything you happen to get in there so the option on the in-floor fish box you can have a larger fish box and a smaller gas tank or you can have a larger gas tank and a smaller fish box. I opted for the larger fuel tank, and so I've got a 160 gallon fuel tank. I believe the one with the larger fish box, I believe is about 120 gallons. And when I bought the boat, the guy Reinhold at Three Rivers Marine made a really good point and it stuck with me. I was kind of going back and forth on do I do the larger fish box or the larger fuel tank. What Reinhold said is you can always find places to put fish. You can always have the cooler bags, you can buckets, whatever it is. You can always find a place to put fish, but you can't always find a place to put gas. And the deciding factor was do we want fish bags on the deck or do we want gas cans? And so the obvious answer was we went with a larger fuel tank. Again, it's 160 gallons. So not very excited to see the fuel dock, but it will definitely get us out to the albacore grounds and back, no problem. So this door will slide open or closed. And when you slide it open, you can hit this lever right here and that will keep that door from opening. So the bleeder box has a drain spout on the back corner. You can also plug that with a normal drain plug if you want to hold water in there. We have a wash down pump. So right here on the side, these are called Miller Marine products and they're a rail mount system for your rod holders. So if you've never seen these, it's a really cool idea. I know a few manufacturers make it, but what, it's, what it is, is these blocks will fit any rod holders, Scotty, Fulby, uh, the list goes on and on. But you install this rail right here to the boat. These blocks have a little break right here. There's a little screw that you can unscrew, which will free it up. And then these slide anywhere you want on the rail. And so it's really convenient for obvious reasons, if we're fishing six people, we can space these out evenly. If we're fishing four or even two, we can kind of decide where we want these to go. Now, these are Orca rod holders by Scotty, and they're very similar to the Fulby, and they're a clam-shaped design, so when you pick your rod up out of this, this whole unit will flip over and bite the fish. Now, a little tip for you. If you're buying the Orca clam-shaped rod holders, make sure you get the locking mount. What happens is anytime you're pulling a rod out of there and that clam shells have an open, you're jerking on this. Now, if it doesn't have a lock like this, when you lift up, you start 
getting wobbly because it locks itself out. Now you got to pull it all the way backwards to disengage it entirely, but nevertheless, when these ones without a lock aren't engaged, if you pull it up, then you're bouncing around. And trust me when I say, especially on these arms, it's kind of a nuisance. So make sure you get the locking unit. There's a button here and that'll pop right out. It'll also pop right in. And when you put pressure up on this, it doesn't move. So it'll come out a lot easier. Now, Miller Marine Products makes this rail mount system. And like I said, there's a couple companies that offer that. I went with Miller Marine Products. I'm happy with it. Uh, Fish Fighter Products is another brand that carries them. Uh, theirs has an actual button that engages in different points. And so I'm sure it holds really solid. Uh, the blocks on the Miller Marine products run you about 30 bucks per block. And uh, the blocks for the Fish Fighter products run about 70. So as you can see, when you start adding, right now I have one, two, three blocks here. I've got two blocks here for my bait table and things like that. You can see when you start getting that eight blocks or so, it can definitely add up. And then you've also got the rail as well. So it's a great feature, very convenient, it's very fishable, but they do set you back a little bit. And a lot of times people will install this rail on the inside, and that's kind of a whole nother subject and a whole nother topic. I wanted mine to be on the top, so when we're out in rougher seas and somebody's fighting a fish on the side, they're not having to avoid these rod holders here on the side. So that's a whole nother debate, and it seems like everybody kind of goes their own direction with it. I went on top. Okay, so let's go take a look on the inside. And what you're gonna see, this is the inside, this is the cabin for the Duckworth Offshore 26. We went with the two bench seats. These bench seats are 47 inches wide they have storage underneath the seat you can access the storage by either lifting the seat here or you can also access it from the handle here and as you can see they have a lot of storage there's plenty of space to put your life jackets and everything like that in these up in the front you have the captain's chair these are full suspension seats. We absolutely love them. I'll do a little walk through on them and tell you a little more about them as we go. As far as electronics go, from the captain's chair. We went right here with Yamaha gauges. These gauges, obviously I don't have them turned on right now, uh, but these fuel gauges will tell you your fuel efficiency, how much fuel you have in your tanks, how far that will take you. will tell you how much you've burned on that trip. So they've got a lot of good features. In the cuddy there, underneath in the center, we just went with a basic porta potty. Down here below, you've got a lot of room up in here. And you've got in floor space everywhere you pick up a pad is basically um, lids that will lift up so you've got a ton of storage up in here now I am six foot three ish maybe six foot four <clears throat> maybe I've lost a little with age but I'm able to lay down sideways inside here and I wouldn't say it's a really comfortable fit but it works it's good enough and so this has been a really good thing for us to have uh, sometimes when I take the girl out with this uh, she wants to take a midday nap and uh, that allows me to stay out on the water longer so I'm really grateful she's able to do that uh, up top you've got your hatch for obviously uh, multitude of reasons especially anchoring 
these hatches do lock from the inside there's latches here and here and they do lock from the inside which is a really cool feature here you have your white light you also have your red for maps um, right over here in the corner is a vent for the Wallace heater this is the 30 GB when we first started trying to use the Wallace we were a little bit confused um, it takes about 11 minutes to fire up and it's kind of sensitive if you over push buttons it's gonna shut off on you it's gonna fail and so once you get it up and running and you get your lines full of diesel and things like that then it seems to be pretty efficient and pretty easy um, the way you operate that is right down here on the panel it's just a simple three second plus push two three and you're gonna hear that unit fire up like it did now within about 45 seconds you'll start to hear kind of a pounding noise kind of a pump and that's actually the unit pulling the diesel and starting to pump it through the lines uh, again it's about 11 minute warm-up and having this installed from Duckworth itself is something I highly recommend and I'll show you why so when people go install these after the fact you, they've got to drill down into here to run your tubes to the vents on the side as you can see but the most important part about the whole thing having it installed was they build in that beautiful little diesel tank that's solid secured made out of aluminum uh, it, it just seems a lot better than some of the plastic ones I've seen from people that do it after the fact so I definitely recommend doing that at the manufacturer if you are going to do it period now are these heaters expensive yeah definitely um, it was actually kind of shocking when when we got the price quote on them um, a heater with everything installed is gonna run you about five grand close to um, something that when you're this far into a boat do you cut any corners we decided not to so we had the heater installed and we have definitely used it uh, when we go out crabbing right now it's November and we're on the Columbia River we're crabbing it can get pretty chilly at times so heater definitely is a must in my opinion from the passenger seat they do have a control right down here if I can zoom in on it that is a wiper control only for the windshield in front of the passenger seat so obviously from my controls at the helm I can control all three wipers or I can control mine solo but this switch right here operates just this window which is really cool when you think about how many times you're out there and you're having to ask over and over when you take a splash only on your side and you keep having to ask the captain to hit that wiper or you're leaning across trying to hit it yourself it just seems like a nuisance and I thought that was a really cool feature Duckworth added to it so we did not go with the stand-up head as I said before we do have a porta potty and things like that down underneath but the stand-up head and my reason for not doing that with this boat is to add the stand-up head requires a wall that I believe goes out 24 inches here and 24 inches here and my thought behind that and why I didn't do it is I felt like that would block a lot of the view of the rods when we're fishing so if you have kids or a wife and a stand-up heads important to them I could see why somebody does it now with our boat we only take day trips if we were out there for longer periods of time maybe that would make sense from my perspective the view of the fishing rods was a lot more important and I'll show you what I mean by that so from the captain's chair obviously there's a lot of windows and I get a really good view of the rods however if I had the wall there and across I would miss 
that whole section that whole section now you can see it all the way out the way it is right now you can see a, a bobber hanging off my house big decoration bobber back there and so you can get a really good view of all the rods so when I'm, when I'm trolling there's a lot of glass in this boat so I can see keep pretty good track on things but I don't think I could have if I would have had those walls there for that stand-up head down the center of the boat you've got a good grab handle that really doesn't need any more description or anything else other than it's really good to have got a little storage up top for miscellaneous we kind of keep some maps up there and some gloves and things like that um, we equip the boat with ram mounts for cell phones we have the balls everywhere and then uh, we can just lock our phones in in a number of different places on the boat these doors I think again are a must um, again that's a little upgrade Turner suspension seats these things are sweet so it took me a little while to get the hang of these things because I've been on a boat for so long without them every time we got into something rough I was used to holding myself in, in place these absorb the shock these bounce they have settings firmness how far they lean back everything else so I'm just now actually getting the hang of just kind of letting it do its job when we're hitting stuff and it really does provide a smooth ride they put the steering wheel down here lower instead of tilted like a lot of boats have and the reason is so you can actually fit your fish finder on the dash so a lot of other models including Duckworth older models used to make you put your fish finders here which again could just kind of block your view so I really like the fact that they gave enough dash space to hold a 12 inch fish finder now obviously we went with the Lawrence HDS 12 Gen 3 so one of the things I love about this Lawrence unit is it's really easy to navigate screens so I can go to these screens that I pre-program and what you're gonna find is everything through the NEMA network basically ties together so I've got my charts I got my maps I've got my depth finder now we're not on the water right now so obviously this isn't gonna read like it would and I've also got my radar unit that overlays so I can turn on my radar I can hit transmit and because I'm home it's obviously gonna start showing me a lot of what's around me you hear it just fire up and there's all my symbols up here in the corner you have this is the brand new Standard Horizon GX 6000 this has AIS so I can see the other ships around me it shows right here my GPS coordinates so if I was in distress and hit hit that call the Coast Guard's gonna immediately have my coordinates where I'm at and everything else now the AIS will show me other ships away and there's a really cool feature about doing this so if I'm back over here into my charts and I start zooming in you guys are gonna see that it, it will start showing me any ships around any ships nearby now you guys can see where I'm sitting right now I do live on the Columbia River so when I see a symbol like that right there I'm able to click on that symbol and it will tell me everything about that boat IVS Orchard is the boat's name I can click on this it'll tell me that it's under engine it'll tell me the coordinates it'll tell me where he's at how fast he's going and so when I'm on the water if I'm out in the fog my radar showing me these symbols 
that AIS is also showing me. And so it's a great, great safety feature. And so I can click on him, show you one more time, IVS Orchard, click on that, and it'll show me everything about him, where he's going, his speed, what his coordinates are, and that will tell me, and he's actually right in front of me right now, and I'll show you, see if I can zoom in on it. And that's him going out in front here, in front of my house. So that is one of the features of AIS. Got my autopilot hooked up through here. I can put in a route and the autopilot will either hold my heading going straight, which is really good for when I'm fishing and I need to run back change something on the rods or bait up a rod set it out I can put it on holding and it'll stay right on on course um, the course right here I can actually go through and again I'm not on the water and I don't want this to kick on or anything so I'm not gonna put anything or touch too much but from the water I can actually put waypoints and dots and say the course that I want this to follow that autopilot will take me where I need to go so it's a pretty cool feature. So I went with the Lowrance HDS-12 Gen 3. When I bought that model, Lowrance was just coming out with their Carbon Series. Now their Carbon Series, my understanding is the upgrades they have over the Gen 3 is one, the Carbon Series has a less reflective screen. Now for you bass guys out there, that probably is a pretty good thing. If you're standing on a bass boat and the sun's beating down and that's coming off your fish finder, there's definitely some advantages to a less reflective screen. Out here in the Northwest, we got roofs overhead. And so that feature didn't hold a big value to me. And uh, the other thing they had is the Carbon Series, my understanding is, has a lot better 3D imaging which again, for you bass fishermen, that's great. When you guys want to mark a log and know that's a log or a rock and know that's a rock, et cetera, et cetera, probably is really good to see things in better 3D imaging. But for us out here in the Northwest, especially in this boat, we're trolling for salmon. We're going offshore for albacore tuna. We're crabbing. Uh, we're doing things like that, that Quite frankly, I don't need a lot of visibility of, on the bottom. Now, the other thing I, I do believe they've got a faster processor on that Carbon Series. Um, overall, I'm really happy with this HDS-12. It's done a great job so far. And uh, knock on wood, hopefully it'll keep going that way for us. Here on the top, we have Loretar. Right below that, we have a 30 inch LED light bar made by Rigid Industries. In the center is a spot on both sides are floodlights. So you kind of get the best of both worlds with this one. And it is very bright. So this anchor and nest is made by Fish Fighter Products. They make a really nice Columbia River anchor. This is a 40 pound anchor. This is their heavy duty bow roller. What I liked about their anchor system is the ability to actually lock this. And I'll show you how it works right here. So as you can see right here, there's a pin that can be pulled this pin can be re replaced with a lock so when you pull the pin out this is kind of a clam shaped design right here so you pull that pin out this folds over now that will release your anchor and then if you want to lock it you can put this back forward
and instead of the pin right here you could put a padlock and that will lock your anchor in so if you're ever traveling help prevent loss from outside of your hotel room so as fishermen we all know we love gadgets and this is one of the more functional gadgets that I've seen in a while this is called a Trollmaster Pro 3 and what this is it's a throttle control for the kicker motor so on this boat I have throttle control for the little motor back here but the throttle controls in the front are both for the big motors so what I was looking for is a way to still have a throttle control from the front when I want to steer the steering up there controls all motors however the throttle control is only for the big motors and when I got a price quote on having another throttle added up there the the number seemed pretty high and it seemed like there would be a better way so what I found was this Trollmaster Pro 3 and what this does it hooks right into your little kicker motor and this is just a throttle control only for that motor so now when I'm trolling from the cabin and I'm steering up front I can still hit my throttle control here one of the cool features is you can hit the the rabbit button right here and what that's going to do is increase your speed slowly or you can hit this top one and it'll give just a couple of second burst 100 percent power and then you can go right back to idle so it's a really cool feature here is another awesome product made by miller marine products so what this is it's a leader holder so when we're using mooching rigs for salmon it's always nice to have leaders pre-tied and pre-ready. What these are, you can grab a hold of one of these and it will just roll right out like a paper towel roller. Worth its weight in gold. Well, here we are at the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, my final thoughts on everything is there's a lot more that goes into making these videos than I ever realized makes me realize how talented some people on YouTube and some of these people that do a lot of video editing makes me realize how talented they are. Um, at the end of the day, my final thoughts throughout the whole process was it, it's definitely been an experience. It's been a lot of fun um, adding features, reading about each thing. I realize how much there is to learn about. One thing that I've taken from this whole experience is I've come to realize how in depth some of these things can be, such as fish finders, VHF radios, radar units. All those things can be really complex, really uh, a lot to learn about it. So I realize I've got a lot still to learn. I'm just right now scratching the surface I will say we had a really fun first year with this boat. Uh, we salmon fished, we tuna fished, we crabbed, fished sturgeon. We did a lot of fun things with this boat and I look forward to continuing to do that. One thing I told you I would do is give honest feedback on some of the processes of making this happen. One thing that I do want to share with you and talk about is the boat buying process and who I bought it from. So I bought this boat from Three Rivers Marine out in Woodenville, Washington. That's about a three hour drive from where I live. I also got a bid from one of the largest sporting good companies in the entire country. It was also selling Duckworth boats at the 2018 Seattle Boat Show. And I got a bid from them I also got my bid from Three Rivers. Now, when I started the process of deciding who I was gonna buy from, it was kind of an interesting thing. So, one of the things the guy at the major sporting goods store kept harping on was that he kept saying those other guys are commission-based salespeople. And he made that sound like a negative thing. And I think a lot of us first look at something like that as a negative I now look at that as a positive because I will tell you this when I was going through the features and telling both comp both businesses what I wanted this boat equipped with 
every time I'd ask Reinhold from Three Rivers Marine, ask him to get me something over in riding, I'd get it right away. I'd get it right away. The other guy literally would take several days, four, four or five days at times on just getting me bids. At the end of the day, I went with Three Rivers. So I bought this boat from Three Rivers Marine. The guy that helped me put it all together and sold me the boat, his name is Reinhold Shook. Anytime I buy something like this or a car or anything like that, I always go into uh, conversations with my guard up. And I will tell you this, Reinhold won my trust for sure. He knows boats, he knows people, and more importantly, he understands that this is about you getting the right boat, not about him selling something. And I will tell you this, if I ever buy a different boat, it will be from him. It will definitely be from Reinhold. And so if you're looking into it, he'll give you honest feedback. When I very first talked to him at the Seattle Boat Show, Reinhold told me that I would rather give you a bid on this boat with everything you could possibly want included and shock you with that price right up front rather than have you not get the boat that you want right up front. He said, if that puts you off till next year to buy this, I'd still rather have you get the right boat. And I thought that's so cool because he knows that that customer being satisfied, even if it was next year, was more important to him than selling me that boat on the spot. And that really, it meant a lot to me. And I definitely would recommend him if you're ever looking for a boat. Now, the other company I wanna talk about is um, England Marine. Now, if you're ever in Astoria, Oregon, if you're ever fishing the buoy 10 fishery around salmon season or whatever, you're gonna drive past England Marine several times. Support them. It's they have great tackle. They have uh, the best staff of salespeople I've ever seen. These guys will give you helpful advice. They'll do anything they can for you. And uh, England Marine, particularly Steve, kind of a tongue twister for me there. Steve helped me with the Lawrence unit, the radar up top, the Lawrence HDS, helped me with the autopilot, and um, every product I asked him about, he was an encyclopedia about. He knew the products in and out. He can help you with the functions. And uh, between him and Mitch at England Marine, they're both the electronics guys. One of the things I realized and really made sense is a lot of times people go out there and they buy their electronics on something like Amazon. It made sense to me to buy it local because if there's any warranty issues or any problems with it, that's something they can settle in-house. I'd much rather prefer that than having Amazon bought products that I have to worry about that whole thing. Heaven forbid something happens to those electronics. So England Marine was great. I definitely recommend them. Uh, awesome. Fish Fighter Products. The Anchor Nest and the Anchor is both Fish Fighter products. Great company, great people. In fact, this last year at Buoy 10, I met Chuck, the owner, and when I had put this Anchor Nest in, it was a little bit complicated to get in. It was just a little bit too tight for the opening up on the front of the boat. And Chuck helped me with some ideas and some pointers which did work and uh, they make a good solid product I was really happy with them Miller Marine products Miller Marine products made the rail mount system that you saw in the back and I'll tell you when I bought that rail mount system I looked at a couple of local retailers to get that to buy that equipment from and I wasn't able to find the rails in the length that I wanted. This is a little longer boat 
and uh, they had six footers. I wanted a seven footer. <clears throat> so I actually called Miller Marine Products from the phone number on their website. They're about an hour away from my house. He invited me to the shop. He gave me a grand tour of the shop, how everything's made. And I realized this guy really cares about his products. He takes a lot of pride in the way they're built, the integrity of the products. He, he will fulfill any issues you may have with it. And I highly recommend Miller Marine products. At the end of the day, the last thing I'm gonna say is this. I talked about it at the start of the video, and I know there's a lot of people that will get online and leave comments, um, some good, some bad. And I know that there's a lot of things that get debated. So when you start looking online for the right fish finder, if you go to the forums and you start looking at it, one guy's gonna swear by Lawrence and sing its praises, and somebody else is gonna come in and bash it to talk about Garmin or a different unit. At the end of the day, get what makes you happy. Get what makes you happy. There's a lot of good boats made nowadays. There's a lot of good electronics made nowadays. Get the one that makes you happy. And if somebody else gets something that you wouldn't have, that doesn't make them wrong or you right. It doesn't make you right or them wrong. It means they got what made them happy and you should get what makes you happy. So in closing, keep tight lines, keep fishing, keep the time on the water, and I hope to see you out fishing sometime. I hope you enjoyed the video.